Via telephone, Dale Lee is the president of the West Virginia Education Association. You heard his voice already. Dale, good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for having us. Fred Albert, president of the American Federation of Teachers, West Virginia chapter. Good morning, Fred. Good morning, Rob, and good morning, John and uh, Matt and Dale. It's good to be with you all this morning. We've spoken with you both in the last week. Yesterday, the news broke that the two of you will join forces in a merger. And I'll start, uh, since I just uh, had your voice there, Fred, we'll start with you. Uh, How long have these talks been ongoing? Well, it's been a couple of years now. Uh, We first met and started talking, although we'd talked before then about other issues. Uh, And and it stalled out for a little little bit of time, but it picked back up. And uh, now we are we are very serious about this. It's been enthusiastic, enthusiastically embraced by our members. Uh, So we are looking forward to the future with a, a lot of opportunity and excitement. Dale, why is this a good idea? Well, we saw in 2018, 2019, the power that we had when we united together and, and, and spoke as one voice. And uh, that's really uh, then former afl President Jim Bowen kept after me and said, this needs to happen, this needs to happen. And so the, he helped facilitate the discussions. Uh, and we went from there and, and realized that with the attacks on public education, and with the attacks on the unions that the legislature has been putting on the last few years, that this was really the the best course of action for not only our members, but for students and and public education in West Virginia. I have been told anecdotally that membership has been declining since the dues are no longer automatically deducted from paychecks uh, without consent. Is that accurate? And is that also something that brought this about sooner than it might have happened otherwise? Dale? Well, that is something that happens in every state that loses payroll deduction. You'll have those that uh, don't want to give your bank information out, the convenience of it for having it drawn out of your paycheck. And that's one of the reasons the legislature passed that. They knew that historically in other states, that was a way to to weaken the, the union, so to speak. But we've seen a, an increase in, in membership. Both organizations have seen an increase in the membership since the initial hit from the payroll deduction. And, and that really uh, is, is a small factor. But the, the huge factor is, you know, we have too many people taking shots at public education now. We don't need to be fighting with each other over the same membership. How many members are there in the WVEA, Dale? We, we don't give those numbers out, but uh, we, we will say that uh, with, with both organizations, we, we represent the majority of the educators in West Virginia. Fred, do you uh, also offer the same answer? I would. I, I do. Uh, and I would also like to say we have seen this happen in other states. Uh, just recently this year, Education Minnesota celebrated their 25th year of a merged state. They had both NEA and AFT locals there, and they merged 25 years ago. And we've been told by the leadership there that it was one of the best moves they made, they've ever made. Uh, we have about five or six other states around the nation, around the nation that are merged states, and it has proved to, to work really well for our members and, and for the students. When will this merger be finalized? Well, we have, uh, you know, our talks are continuing. Uh, We look to have this in place by September of 2025. You know, ultimately it will be up to a vote of our members, but we have a lot of uh, grunt work to do to get there. We have uh, policies and constitutions to look at and all of the particulars. There There are guidelines that are set forth by both of our national uh, AFT and NEA. And by the way, Dale and I both met with our national uh, leaders together, and, and we have their blessing. They think it's the right thing for West Virginia, and uh, they're they're with us all the way. So we're, we're looking forward to this, like I said, with excitement, and it's a new opportunity to bring a unified voice to our educators. And, and we when I say educators, and Dale says this also, we include our service personnel members. 
They play a very important part of our membership. So it's teachers and service personnel. John Gilstrap. So let's take a historical perspective a little bit. Good morning, first of all. Um, why were there two unions to begin with? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> and and Dale might be able to address that even better than myself. But uh, it's you know it's been something that's been here for many years and. Uh, I guess at one point, maybe different uh, different outlooks or different philosophies, but we're all in this together. Um, so I don't know if Dale has more to add to that, but it's just uh, something we both inherited. Yeah, the WVA has been around for oh, about 156, 57 years. Uh, AFT West Virginia came in, I believe, in the 1980s, and right. uh, it was a, a – uh, difference of philosophy at that point uh, and with us not being a part of the AFL-CIO there were some that wanted to be part of that uh, labor umbrella so that's uh, that's part of it and, and just really a, a falling out of things in in a couple locals at that time so as of I don't know a month ago if I were a teacher I'd I would no matter where I'm teaching, if pick a county, if I would have to choose a whether or not I wanted to join a union, and then b which of the two unions I wanted to join. Yes. And yes. then, so y'all were marketing against each other at one point. So what are the what were the differences that you were touting when when you're competing against each other that have to be melded together now? Well, well one, one of, one of the, the things differences. Go ahead, Dale. One of the things that we'd rather focus on is what a new organization would be like and, and building something that, that the members are interested in and want and having more uh, activities and things for our members in, in that aspect. So we, over the years, we've both uh, said some things and, and did some things with differences that, you know, in the battles, but now our focus is on building something even stronger and better for the members and for public education. Fred? And I would, al I would also say that we've always, uh, from AFT standpoint, we've always uh, engaged with the AFL-CIO and the other unions that belong to the AFL-CIO. Uh, and we use that as one of our strengths, that, you know, when you belong to AFT, you belong to a larger family of, of laborers. If you're just so that was one of the points we, we used with AFT marketing. If you're just tuning in, the voices of Fred Albert and Dale Lee, uh, respective union heads for the two teachers unions, the major teacher unions in the state, they announced yesterday that they would merge. Matt Harvey. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Fred, I'm going to go to you on this one. Um, now, this hasn't been voted on, so this is not official, but obviously there's a sense from you two that this is going to be successfully passed. Um, so I, I, I'm curious, was this uh, a top-down decision, or was this something that no. originated from the members? No. Well, th thank you for that question, Matt, and I appreciate that. Actually, uh, when Dale and I started meeting and talking uh, with others, Josh Sword from the AFL-CIO, and initially, as Dale said, Jim Bowen, the President Emeritus from the AFL-CIO, who unfortunately now has passed away, uh, and Kim Randolph, the Executive Director of uh, the WVEA. We uh, started those talks after we had gone to our executive, my executive board and Dale's executive committee and presented to them what we would like to do. Mm -hmm. And we got their uh, total approval by a vote. Uh, to, to continue these talks. And then we developed what we call the value statements of a new organization. We took that to our executive, my executive board, his executive committee, and then we also had a special convention, a convening of our uh, delegates. Uh, Dale had a delegate assembly. I had a special convention and presented those value statements, uh, and those were passed unanimously by those bodies. And that gave us permission then to continue our talks toward a merger. And as we said, 
uh, you know, ultimately it's not my decision or Dale's decision, but it's the decision of our members. And uh, we, we think that they're going to be totally on board. I mean, there are questions all, all along the way, but so far we have been met with enthusiasm from our boards and from our members. And you highlighted some of the differences in the two associations or unions. Do you think that the joining of this will create a will, will sharpen each other's skills? There's like a symbi- symbiotic relationship that will ensue from this. Absolutely, and that's that's the whole intent. Is that the new merged organization will be something that will be stronger, will have a more unified voice, and. You know, when we look at this, we're all in this for our public schools and for our students, of course, for our members, but that's exactly what we want the outcome to be, a stronger voice, a more unified voice, and something that supports uh, public education like we've never seen before. So we know that we are stronger together, and that's, that's been proven. So that's what we're looking for. Uh, a newer day, a new day with a, a new organization that perhaps will also be attractive to some of the educators who do not belong to either at the moment. And, and, let, and with oh, go ahead, Dale. I'm sorry. Let me, let me just add that that uh, you know, with without fighting each other for the same membership, it, it frees up staff, it frees up resources. Uh, to be able to do more things that, that the, the members want to do and, and to be able to have them lead us in the direction that uh, they would like to see a, a new organization move forward in. And we have all kinds of problems in public education with 1,705 teaching positions without a certified teacher in them, uh, lack of bus drivers, lack of subs, lack of aides, lack of cooks and everything else. It's time for us to address those issues, and we are now, but unified to address them and and to have a stronger voice. Well, Dale, I was going to come to you next with who's going to be in charge. (laughs) Well, uh, all those things will be worked out as as we continue these discussions, uh, and and then the members will elect leadership at at some point and and what they want to to, do. for them to be in charge, I, I can tell you this: that uh, you know, I am I am, have been committed to getting this off the ground, but I'm not committed to to uh, leading this forever and ever. I, I'm I'm getting old. It's time to go back to to uh, uh, Mercer Mall and and <laughs> shop a little bit and, and see if I can find the patches on the sleeves of those sport coats and and. Uh, play with my grandsons excuse me dale we we were talking about the um you yours was the non-aflcio affiliated right right okay so during the covid debacle um the teachers unions uh took it a hit in terms of their their reputation among many in america uh, because of the, you know, led by Randy Weingarten and the, and the, the, the cause to keep teachers out of the classroom and to keep schools closed. One might argue after it became clear that the, the kids were not, were not suffering well. So do you consider that to be a, a shining moment or kind of a shameful moment? And how does that, that reputational damage, if it is damage, maybe I'm wrong here. Uh, well, me, how does that affect make- going on? Yeah, let me make it clear on that. We we were fighting to ensure that uh, that our educators and our students were safe, and then we were uh, putting it up to the the local control aspect of it. There were some of our counties uh, and and Fred's organizations the same way. Some of our counties were comfortable in going in, and we supported their their uh, desire to go back in and get the kids in as quickly as possible. There were others where the outbreaks were more that, that they weren't comfortable with that, and we were supportive of that and fighting for that. But all during that time, you have to remember that it's, it was our, our members, our, the educators across the state of West Virginia, that were reaching out to the kids, that were taking food to the kids, that were uh, uh, helping them with, with their, their studies and their academics and everything else, checking on them to make sure that they were okay and they were safe. So... 
So I would contend that, that we did a tremendous job during COVID. Uh, did some kids fall behind ac- academically? Sure. Were there some kids that uh, 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 unfortunately didn't get the attention they needed? Sure. But you, we, that was a crisis that we hadn't experienced since the, the Spanish flu. And, and uh, as old as I am, I, I wasn't around then. So it was something that was new to all of us. Uh, and, and so uh, were there possibly some missteps? Possibly. But we were doing what science said and what, what the experts were saying was for the best of the safety of our educators and our students. If I could, if I could speak to that, sure, since Fred. you did mention Randy Weingarten, you know, uh, the schools closed down uh, March the 16th. That was a call by the governor uh, to close our schools March the 16th of 2020. In April of 2020, AFT came out with a document that we had put together nationally to, that without, you know, with uh, input from doctors and scientists and nurses, healthcare workers and educators of how we might open schools safely. And that, that was what we were promoting as well as I'm sure Dale's National Association was promoting the same thing. We want to go back to school. We do not want to keep schools closed, but we want to make sure that people are safe. And like Dale said, we had never experienced anything like that in our lifetime. So it was a learning process. Um, possibly we did make some mistakes, but, you know, we've done a lot, I think, to correct those mistakes going forward. What was the input you got from your members during those times? Were they, were they frustrated? We had, members, we had members who were frustrated because some schools were opening and they were scared. Uh, you know, we they were all over the place, like many people are on, on unknown things such as the pandemic. Uh, we had never experienced that before. We had elderly employees who, you know, were nearing their retirement, and they didn't want to die before they retired, and they were scared. So we had members all over the place. We had members, and I'm not speaking for Dale, but I'm sure he would probably agree, We had members calling the office every day saying, I don't want to go back to work because I don't I don't want to bring this uh, pandemic or this uh, COVID home to my family, my elderly parents. I'm keeping elderly parents in my home. So there there was a lot of unknowns um, and people were just overly cautious uh, and they wanted to protect themselves and their families. I would add in this state, it's also quite particular as well because of the number of grandparents who are raising uh, kids uh, as sure opposed is. to parents, which also, if we remember back toward those times, the elderly were particularly at risk uh, in, in this uh, in that scenario. Uh, Dale, I don't know if you want to comment or not. I'm going to get off well, COVID and go to another question for you regarding you, the merger if you, you want to. You, you also have to remember that you know, a, a lot of West Virginians died uh, with COVID and, and during that time. So... So it wasn't uh, a hoax type of thing. It was a real uh, health crisis. And, and again, I, as I said in an earlier statement, our locals that and our com- communities that were comfortable with, when they were comfortable with going back in, we supported that decision and, and we helped fight to, to get them back in. But those that weren't, we, we supported them too. I want to go back to the merger uh, with a question for you, too, as well. Uh, will there be a new name that is uh, eventually unveiled um, to us in regards to what the teachers union will be called? Yeah, we're going to have a, a uh, uh, so different focus groups. We're going to have members involved in, in uh, uh, kind of uh, getting their vision of, of where they want this to go. But, but there will be a new name. Uh, a, a new brand, a new uh, message, purpose, mission statement, uh, and, and it will be uh, member-driven uh, in these decisions. It's not something that that uh, Fred and I are going to decide. As a matter of fact, we're not going to call it the uh, uh, Dale Lee or Fred Albert Teachers uh, Organization, uh, although I, I tried to push for that. I got outvoted really quickly on that. But, Sounds uh, good, though. 
but, but, but no, Which it, one, it will Fred, be something. Fred or Dale? <laughs> oh, I got outvoted on the Dale one. I... <laughs> Fred, Fred, I don't know if you noticed, but Dale put his name first in that conversation part right there. I noticed that. Yeah. I noticed that. It always well, comes down to does, billing. He yes, does, does come before F, so yeah. you know I, I understand that. So <laughs> I guess as you as you uh, merge, will you be affiliating more with the bylaws of the AFT or with the WVEA, or you're throwing both out and creating your own? We're creating a new organization with a new constitution, new bylaws. Uh, uh, our, our value statement that was unanimously adopted by by both governing bodies, the, our delegate assembly, their convention, both executive boards or our executive committee, uh, and that will set the standard. That will be the guiding point for where this new organization will go and what their constitution and bylaws will look like. Dale, let me stay with you on that one. Um, will there be a parent organization, a, like a national organization, or are you totally divested from them with this merger? No, we, we will actually, is what happens in these other states that have merged, uh, members uh, belong to both national organizations. So there's uh, there's guidelines that the nationals have in place that, that states follow when, when they're having these discussions. But uh our members will actually be uh, affiliated with both the AFT National and the NEA National. If if I'm a staffer for either one of your organizations, am I nervous now about getting laid off? I mean, you mentioned that you'll be able to free up staff time, but you're also going to be duplicating a lot of staff and, no, and resources. No, it, actually, it will allow us to uh, divide the state into, into little smaller regions and, and uh, be able to to make sure that staff is, is doing, uh, having the, the position and, and the things that they do. We've already talked to both of our staffs. Uh, we have been very transparent all along the way with our staff and, and with our local leaders and our members. Uh, even when these started discussions uh, two years ago, I traveled around all over the state to the regions and met with local leaders and members and, and answered any questions they have. Fred and I will be doing that again as soon as the session's over. We'll be going to to different uh, counties and, and regions to answer questions that uh, both members and non-members may have and, and to uh, uh, really listen to the voice of, of our the people and, and move it forward from there. I just, you know, the in a lot of the areas in West Virginia, there has been a trend for consolidation of schools, and and we kind of are we seeing that with this as well for the same reasons. No, no, this is this is not a consolidation. This is uh, uh, following a model that that was set in place by Minnesota 25 years ago, that realized when you're standing together, united, you're stronger, and and that's that's what uh, this is all about. This is not a uh, consolidation. It's not a uh, uh, takeover or, or anything else at all like that. It, it's really it's just uh, uh, making something better and stronger. Dale, you mentioned a moment ago that you've uh, put a lot of work into shepherding this and trying to get this merger to take place, and that at some point along the way in the near future, it sounds like you're ready to start to kick back a little bit. Fred, what are your future plans? Is, is uh, being the head of this new union a potential uh, goal of yours? No, it is not. And I, I'm older than Dale, actually. <laughs> uh, I'm ready, you know, to pass the torch. And like Dale, I want to make sure that I, I can stick around a little bit to see this through. But no, I do not. That is not my desire. Uh, I just want to make sure that we get this off the ground and that we, going forward, have a strong new organization. Uh, that's going to serve our me members and the future members and our students well. Hey, I want to thank you both. He, he, he may be older than he may be older than me, but with all these basketball stories and stuff, <laughs> you kind of count my age in dog years. So, uh, <laughs> Dale, it, it becomes a little tougher. Dale, I, ca I count your age in referee ejections. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy, then I'm in real trouble. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you both very much for making time for us this morning. Thank you, uh, thank and you say hello me. to my friend Jockey Long. She's listening right now. I can, I can promise you that. I hope so. You guys have a great day. Thank, thank you. you. Same to you. Take care.
Red Albert, president of the American Federation of Teachers West Virginia, Dale Lee, president of the West Virginia Education Association, addressing their proposed merger, which they hope to have uh, in place in 25, it sounded like to me, 